American football during the Second Great War was one of the few escapes the nation had from thinking about their loved ones far across the world fighting for our freedom. Soldiers themselves played on the gridiron as part of their physical training, and they had produced some extremely good football teams, had those military teams. Let's peer in on one of those World War II military 11s that made the crowds cheer. Welcome to another Sports Jersey Dispatch, Roars of the Crowd. Those moments when we stood up and cheer as fans. One of a sports fan's favorite sounds is when a participant in an athletic event does something spectacular and impacts history, the game, or both, and makes an instant memory. We try and capture these on a daily basis to preserve sports history, saving those sports memories one day at a time. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of Pigpen Sports. Welcome once again to the Pigpen, your place for all things great in sports history. And we have another one of our roar of the crowds. This one is especially geared at the date of September 23rd with a great event that made those crowds cheer. Uh, before we get to that, we just want to make sure that you know that you can join our email newsletter. It comes out every day, 6.30 a.m. Eastern in your email inbox. All you have to do is go to the show notes of this podcast and click Click on email subscription. There's two little pieces of information to fill out. If you do that, you'll have the, you'll know everything that's going on from Pigpen Sports, Pigskin Dispatch, JerseyDispatch.com, and the Sports History Network, as well as Orville Mulligan, Sports Writer, our great audio drama. So make sure you do that. Now, let's flip the calendar pages back a bit to the World War II era. It's football season, 1944, and the Purdue Boilermakers traveled to the Great Lakes, Illinois to play ball against the Great Lakes Naval Academy team. Great Lakes is the Navy's largest training installation and is the home of their only boot camp. It really was a busy place during the war to train young sailors so that they were ready to fight the Axis powers. Like their brethren at the Naval Academy and at West Point, where the soldiers are, These sailors at the Great Lakes Naval Academy had some tremendous gridiron talent on their roster. The players on the 1944 Great Lakes team included backs Jim Mule, a quarterback from Iowa, Eddie Sons, a halfback from the University of Southern California, Chuck Avery, he played right halfback with the Minnesota Golden Gophers, Jim Mello, well he was a fullback at Notre Dame, John Leshner, he also was a halfback in college football. Don Mangold uh, of Indiana. Bob Hanlon, an Aeroparsegian, Miami, Ohio. Aeroparsegian, of course, went on to be the great Notre Dame head coach. Uh, They had ends of Cecil Sauters and George Young from Georgia. And lineman Pete Kravonik at guard. Jesse Hahn at guard. And Carmen Izzo playing center some great names in football history uh you know we have a lot of those showing up on pigskindispatch.com you can check out a lot of those players there using our powerful earl to go search engine uh well purdue was not too shabby either for being uh, in wartime of course they lost a lot of their potential football players to the armed services that were fighting in the war uh, the naval team had the lead by halftime though with a score of 14 to 12 it was a tight one but probably only because of a couple of offsides penalties on Purdue which prevented the Boilermakers from making the line to gain in the waning seconds before the half what they did do was leave the Great Lakes team with time to play one more play before intermission another offsides call moved the Great Lakes team just a little bit closer uh, to that goal line that last play was a pass from quarterback Jim Mule to a streaking Don Mangold in triple coverage by Purdue defenders. The pass couldn't have flown any truer to its mark. Touchdown, Great Lakes. And the Boilermakers uh, you know, found themselves in a hole 14-12 to at the half. But the Boilermakers came out in the second half and marched methodically on a 45-yard drive to take an 18-14 to lead after missing the extra point attempt. Great Lakes regained the lead, though. Again, 20-18 on another long yield pass to Jim Keene this time. And their point failed as well. And the, the, we were on top again, that 2018 score. It was only seconds later that the Blue Jackets scored again, this time on a punt return by Jim Yule, who was doing everything that day. He muffed the kick at first, but then regained his composure to weave through the kicking team with needle-like precision until he traveled 93 yards to Pater. This was the final score of the game, but it was a doozy and the Sailors won the day and heard the roar of the crowd. 
last postscript to this story is that the Great Lakes Naval Blue Jackets uh, team of 1944 lost only two games all season. The first was a 6-26 loss at number four in the nation, Ohio State. And the second L that tarnished their record that year was a season finale loss at Notre Dame. The Blue Jackets were ranked as high as number five in the country prior to that game with the Buckeyes and ended up being 17th in the nation in the final poll. So that is just some great uh, gridiron history. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little bit of a history where a great player made a great play and made those crowds cheer and brought a memory that we're remembering you know, some 80 years later. So hope you uh, join us each and every day for some more great sports history. And when you're not, go to sportshistorynetwork.com. 30 great podcasters bringing you podcasts all day long. It's the headquarters of sports yesteryear. You can also find more football at pigskindispatch.com and our website, jerseydispatch.com. Till tomorrow, everybody, have a great Gridiron Day. We're dribbling around and see the shot clock's almost out, so we got to put up our shot and come back tomorrow for some more great sports history. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com.